Welcome to Technotis, another CPU comparison for creators. We have the Ryzen 7 5800X and Intel i5 12600K. Now they're roughly within the same kind of price range of CPUs. We're gonna look at the price in a moment, but which one is better and which one should you go for? Let's find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. The reason these two go head to head is because of the price range, not because of the cause and some else but if we compared Ryzen 7 to the i7 the performance difference would be even bigger this i5 is closer to the Ryzen 7 5800x and the, the i7 12700k is more closer to the Ryzen 9 5900x kind of territory so that's how they line up before we're gonna look at the specs and benchmarks we need to talk about the test bench setup and if you've seen my other CPU comparisons then the people commented on the other videos that why are you comparing the 12th gen with DDR5 and not DDR4. So this time we do have DDR4 benchmarks as well because I actually had them for this particular CPU. But generally why the 12th gen is compared with DDR5 is because it has the feature. To me it makes no sense if we're not comparing the CPU with the feature it has. What else should we take out then? Should we take out the efficiency cores as well and compare you know performance cores? Well should we put the clock speeds the same as well? Shall we look we're just going to compare with all of the CPU features there is and then all of the max features Ryzen uh, has here. Now when Ryzen had Gen 4 and Intel 10th gen didn't have Gen 4 PCIe you know lanes then we didn't compare the Ryzen's with PCIe Gen 3 and so on. So whatever CPU comparison we're going to do we're always going to compare them with the maximum of its features rather than trying to compromise to the you know lower of the CPU or the older CPU generations to kind of match the specs. To me, that wouldn't make any sense. So, test bench setups then. First of all, Ryzen. The Ryzen has been tested with the MSI X570S Ace Max motherboard because the motherboard has very good power delivery. And if you want to compare it with the PBO enabled as well, we can get the best out of the Ryzen system. And it packs a lot of features, so we know that we're not limited with the motherboard. Very good motherboard. The cooler is the RG Rugin 360 millimeter cooler. We're using 64 four gigabytes of DDR4 Kingston Fury Renegade RGB RAM running at 3600 megahertz CL18 and the GPU is ASUS RTX 1390 Tough. On the Intel side, the GPU is the same. The cooler is the Fantex Glacier 1 360mm AIO. The motherboard is ASUS Z690 ProArt. And for RAM, we're using four sticks of 16GB DDR5 Kingston Fury Beast running at 4800MHz CL38. Eight. Even though the Intel system has been built inside the case, the side panel is open and the Ryzen system is in the open test bench, so both of them are not restricted by the airflow or the case. Now then, specs comparison. The Ryzen 5800X has 8 cores and 16 threads. The 12600K has 10 cores but 16 threads. So we do have 2 extra cores but the thread count is the same on the 12600K. Max frequency, the 12600K boosts is 4.9 GHz and 4.7 GHz on the 5800X. 12600K does have PCIe Gen 5 support, but 5800X only Gen 4. RAM compatibility is only DDR4 on the 5800X, but 12600K does support DDR4 and DDR5. The cache on these CPUs is actually higher on the 5800X at 32 MB, but 20 megabytes on the 12600K. The TDP is 105 watts on the 5800X and 125 watts on the 12600K. The turbo power or PBO on Ryzen really is roughly around 140 watts, whereas the 12600K is 150 rated by Intel, but according to my testing, I'm only seeing roughly about 135 pulled from the socket. The 5800X doesn't have an iGPU, but the 12600K has the UHD 770 iGPU built into the CPU. The price difference is quite a bit actually. 
The 12600K a few weeks ago was around $300 or so, but at the moment I can easily see this at $278 on sale on Amazon and a new egg. So if you want to pick these up or check out the latest pricing, check out the links in the description below. The 5800X is $339 to around $350. It's a little bit cheaper at the moment on new egg, but a little bit more expensive on uh, Amazon. So feel free to check out the latest pricing in the description below. So then let's start with the benchmarks. First First of all, power consumption. So when running the Cinebench R23 10 minute test back to back, we can see how much are we pulling actually from the socket. So the 5800X when PBO is disabled, we can see it's only pulling 135 watts. I'm saying only. You know, knowing the i9s on Intel, it is only 135 watts. When enabling the PBO, the wattage increases to 140 watts. But the 12600K here at stock settings is pulling 135 watts. Now the Z690 Asus ProRad BIOS is all like on auto or let BIOS optimize all the performance. So I haven't overclocked it in any way. It's just the stock settings, whatever it comes from the um, you know factory, just enabling uh, XMP and that's it. We're not going to change anything else. By the way, all the percentages are compared to the 5800X at stock settings, just so you know. Moving on to Cinebench R23, when enabling the PBO on the 5800X, interestingly, we're actually losing a little bit of single core performance and slightly on the multi core performance, but this is 0.01%. So basically, no difference when enabling PBO in Cinebench R23. The 12600K with DDR4 is 21% faster in single core and about 20% faster in multi-core scores. With DDR5, the difference really isn't anything here at all. I'd say they're basically the same DDR4 or DDR5, roughly around 20% better than the 5800X. Moving on to Geekbench 5, similar story. When enabling the PBO on the Ryzen, we're really not seeing any increase in single or multi-core performance. The 12600K here though is about 7% faster in single core and 20% faster in multi-core speeds. When adding the DDR5 into the mix, we're actually gaining extra 5% in single core speeds and extra 7% in the multi core speeds. Moving on to Blender CPU rendering, we have three scenes here. This is Blender 3.1, latest version available at this point in time. When enabling the PBO in monster scene, junk shop and classroom scenes, we're really seeing less than 1% increase on Ryzen side. On the 12600K though, we're roughly about 5 to 6% faster in monster scene, about the same on junk shop scene and about 6% faster on the classroom scene. When adding the DDR5 into the mix, we're gaining a few extra percent here, as you can see. DDR5 is about 2% faster in Monster and about 0.4% faster in the classroom scene. So having DDR5 in Blender doesn't really make a difference. Moving on to photo editing and Photoshop. When enabling the PBO on the Ryzen 5800X, we can see that all of our scores are suddenly lower. Now I know it doesn't make quite a lot of sense because more wattage should mean more power, but these aren't just a one single test. I have tested this multiple, multiple times, minimum three times, but often averaging like about five tests and then calculating the average of those tests so we can really see if there is any difference in there. The 12600K here, is actually 12.9, almost 13% better in overall score than the Ryzen 5800X. And when moving to DDR5, we see extra few percent gains in Photoshop, but not a massive gains to really make you jump from DDR4 to DDR5. Lightroom Classic. When enabling the PBO in this program, we can see that we're actually gaining about 1% in overall score on the Ryzen side, but the 12600K is still about 7% faster than the 5800X. Looking at the DDR5 performance, we're gaining extra 6% or so. So a little gain there, but not a huge thing. Premiere Pro. When enabling the PBO on the Ryzen side, we're gaining on average about 1.4% in performance compared to the stock settings. The 12600K is 33.5% faster than the 5800X. 
and when enabling the DDR5, we're gaining extra 5% or so, and we're about 140% faster than the 5800X. Now bear in mind, this test I wasn't able to complete with the XMP at 4800 MHz, because 46 XMP on DDR5 is still very, very dodgy, and it doesn't really work. So in this benchmark, I had to drop it to 4000 megahertz. Bear in mind, in the future, if you have fast DDR5, like 6400 MHz or something like that, you can expect extra you know boost in there because this 4000 megahertz ddr5 is very slow ddr5 in after effects the 5800x with pbo is literally the same no difference there so i didn't see any performance difference in overall settings but 12600k is about 7.8 percent faster with ddr4 and about 11.4 percent faster with ddr5 so we're gaining extra four percent there with ddr5 so davinci resolve now here the 5800x with pbo enabled is literally the same or slightly slower so no point of enabling the pbo there the 12600k with ddr4 is only 1.4 percent faster in overall score so the riser performs very well in the actual davinci resolve benchmark here with ddr5 we're really not gaining anything here extra 0.4 percent in average of the overall score so i wouldn't really think that ddr5 is worth it on uh, davinci resolve here now i do want to make a point that this davinci resolve benchmark doesn't utilize or use a lot of h265 codecs now if you have any h265 codecs and you're shooting mirrorless cameras and you're editing a lot of you know a7s3 or canon r5 or something like that then having the igpu inside the 12th gen the 12600k will make a massive difference for you because the igpu encoders can work together with the dedicated graphics card and the codecs there because the igpu encoders here are better than the nvec encoders and can support more hardware acceleration of codecs than any other encoders out there on the pc side obviously mac and you know the mac studio or max m1 chips have much better codecs but on the windows side of things the uhd 770 has the best encoders and decoders inside there so if you have a lot of h265 you know codecs in your workflow then maybe consider the intel in v-ray here the pbo enabling gives you a two percent boost but 12600k is still 6.2 percent faster than the 5800x and with ddr5 we're not making a massive difference so having ddr5 in v-ray doesn't make a difference so then in conclusion which one is a better processor in pretty much every single test the 12600k is better than the ryzen chip and to me what's even more amazing or interesting is that the 12600k really consumes less power than the 5800x i know this can boost up to 150 watts but compared to my testing i can only see a roughly around 135 watts pulled maximum from the socket and the idle power consumption of this 12600k because of the efficiency cost is so much lower than the ryzen chip so your electricity bill is really going to be better with the 12th gen i5 12600k now bear in mind some people say that the ryzen motherboards are actually cheaper than the intel motherboards and it is true the ryzen motherboards can be cheaper and you can find a cheaper motherboard on the ryzen system at the same time if you find the same model of a motherboard on the intel 12th gen and ryzen x570 platform so z690 and x570 then you can easily see that the z690 offers more features and that's why it's more expensive so you're not just gonna pay extra for nothing you actually get more features as well because it is newer so that's why it is newer so when you consider the price differences there then the cpu you know price difference might not be that big of a deal but at the same time to me it still feels like a cheaper chip on the intel side because i can get a better motherboard for the same you know overall cost of the system let's say you know ddr4 motherboard and cpu the whole package will be better in spec and performance than what i could get on the ryzen side another thing here to consider is the upgradeability and future proofness if you can say that the ryzen platform am4 socket does not offer any more cpus or there's not another generation going to come out the 5800x 3d is the last chip that's going to come out soon or by the time you're watching this it might be out but there is no upgrade path really available for there whereas this 12th gen really 
has a little bit of a brighter future knowing Intel in the past they have supported at least two generations of CPUs there so the next 13th gen most likely well it will be supported with this is there anything more than that supported after that not sure would be nice to see that but there is a bit of a better upgrade path on the 12th gen um, you know option here on the platform so you could upgrade your CPU later on so as a creator if you're asking me which one should you go for then I would really consider this 12600k because it's a lot better in pretty much every single benchmark and it does cost less as well if you want to check out the latest pricing for these two chips check them out in the description below thanks guys for watching I'll see you in the next one by the way if you're still here haven't clicked out yet just the cool thing is that almost never I have the right CPU here when I'm making these CPU comparisons. Look at this. This is, you see this is 12700 i7. And this is a Ryzen 5 here. It's because you can't see it so close and most likely these CPUs when I've completed the benchmark, they're still in the best, best bench setup. So I'll just pull whatever CPU I have because you can't really see it. They, they look the same, but that's different. Anyway, see you soon. Bye bye.